Okay, the next one is over here. One, 120, 121 to 120, 125. I think that's a separate one right there. And that is uh, Cambridge Street, uh, Great Neck. Mm -hmm. It's Cambridge, Great Neck. I think we're close. This is 103. Which, which Control. I think it has to have continuity. It has it's to got to be perceived to be to be your comfort blanket, and therefore it has to have power. I think in this context it has to have power. Whether it, whether it means that in, in the pure sense, I don't know. To be honest, but uh, and it might not be possible for all sorts of practical reasons. Mm -hmm. It might have to be like you've just described. But I think that is 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 what is is given. You know. Is that Catherine? Yes, the core area, or you know, that there's some other way of doing this. That that's there right. may be new ways of handling yeah, tourism yeah. that's more ecological and more sustainable. That's right. Those things, and that then there's a series also of what are you getting for it? Yeah. You know, what is the public and, and, and the whole notion spaces? that you're not just protecting protecting the landscape that you've got, you're actually creating new landscapes, new pieces, new yeah. pieces. You know, that, and that's part of the package. The idea that development could also mean developing new landscapes, you know, um, is is just as just as valid as, as as anything else. And I think that's always left out of the development equation, is the fact that you can actually develop well, better landscapes thing, than you've got. The other thing that goes in both these categories is new economic development strategies. Yeah. Opportunities that that we're talking about, you know, that that in reconsidering these things and changing the kind of the way you think about zoning, you're beginning to get new possibilities of, um, of sort of generative businesses, that new ways that people can work out of their houses, yeah. new ways that they can have, um, they can use the properties, new ways that they can work. Yeah. 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 Besides sort of opening up certain breakthrough ideas, Joel and talking about what are the new public amenities that this offers, we have to address you know, the, the issue of jobs. We have to address the strategies for affordable housing. We don't have to solve the problem, but we have to say that we have, you know, the following things are in play, under consideration. Well, These are things we're right. looking for but solutions to. But what we have to, to do is build connections. And infrastructure. Yes. And you know, whatever the work groups were, economy, infrastructure, affordable right. housing. But as well as talking about affordable housing and job creation strategically, we actually have to make connections between right. how right. much the, how much better um, what the affordable how housing the is as a result of changing right. these other things. The fact that affordable right. housing... But it has to keep filling into the same drama. The, the, but part, part of it is we have to get rid of the existing disincentives. Right, right now right. the whole system is structured. Yes. It's biased yes. against the creation of employment opportunities and against creation of affordable yes. housing and in favor of creating seasonal occupancy housing. Single and they don't even realize that that's what they've done. Yeah. And it's understandable that they um, And it's taken us a while to figure that out, too. Yeah. But so uh, it seems to me there are two steps to this process always. There's getting rid of all the things that are You're pushing wrong. in the wrong direction right. yes. and see where you are. And then you only need some less powerful so incentives than you think to move things Absolutely. in the right direction. Uh, most of you, I'm assuming, were in some part here uh, from Friday night through Saturday and Sunday, so uh, it'll be quite interesting to see what uh, we've done, or what I should say our consulting team has done. I didn't have a lot to do with it. I, th I think it's important to stress that, that the process of, of coming up with a plan like this, it's important to consider ideas. Uh, to try not to be too rigid in our thinking and to try to, as Pam said, suspend the rules for a weekend and try to come up with new ideas and new thoughts about how this community can grow and live and evolve 
uh, say for the next 25 to 30 years. Again, uh, we're not just doing this for ourselves, but hopefully for a few generations ahead of us. So uh, as you see, uh, the ideas and things that people came up with, the group came up with this uh, over the weekend up on the screen, some of them uh, hopefully you will like, some of them you might not like. Uh, but I just wanted to stress that they are ideas, uh, simply that we have a period of about six to seven months where we need to take the good ideas, commit to them, and take the bad ideas and frame them up and put them on a wall and uh, look at them 10 years from now for a laugh, maybe. You've made great progress in a lot of them. The things that perhaps progress hasn't been made in um, is, in fact, what's going to go where, which is pretty fundamental relative to all the other things you have made progress in. It's kind of the tail wagging the dog a little bit, but it's understandable because they're probably the most difficult things to deal with, the most difficult things to get through uh, politically, financially, and to get people to, to cope with the notion that perhaps things have to change, some things have to change. And that's always difficult. It's always the difficultest thing. If you can, you can make better sewage, you can make better transport, you can try and do your, your um, uh, monitoring your water. And all these are very important things to do. But actually, how do you deal with growth in terms of management and the physical allocation of these things that are coming um, at you? Growth is coming at you. How do you deal with it in terms of making a plan for where you should go? And we all acknowledge too, even though this is a wonderful community, the more we spent time in it, we realized that it's like every, every other community. It's got as many differences as it has people almost, you know, at very subtle levels. And there are consistencies across them too, but there are an enormous variety of interpretations, of definitions, of beliefs, of wishes, of priorities, and so on. So it's like every other community, even though you are a community, the idea that a community all thinks the same way, it never did, never will. But yet we've got to come up with a community plan because it's your island. So there are different facets of concern, but nobody, as we all know, has a monopoly on legitimacy. Nobody has. But we have to make sense of these seemingly disparate elements. And we do see disparate elements when we, when we come here. We see people very passionate, quite rightly so, and genuinely, honestly passionate about no growth. Right? Finish the house that's being built right now, and then don't dare build another. And it's genuine, and it's passionate, and it's research, and it's believed. And that's to be respected. On the other side, it's something that's also to be respected. Hold on, we want more money circulating through our economy. So we can make better schools, we can make better health, we can probably afford better doctors, we can fund public transport better. There's legitimacy in that thing too. But they're way over here often. And then, no doubt, as always is the case, there's a whole crowd of people somewhere in the middle that via one way or the other will probably stay quiet or, or whatever, and that's natural too. But we're in a period, I think, of, of um, everywhere in society, it seems to me, of, of retreating from interactionism to isolationism to an alarming degree in, in societies everywhere, I think. We're kind of backing off from, from being with each other in the way we design things, the way we go. We're retreating into a very private world. That's not to say that privacy isn't important. But the way we're designing things too, I think, which is an aspect of sustainability, is a, a, a running away from, from lots of in, interactions by the way we actually lay out our, our settlements everywhere. You know, the UK is no different in that sense at all. And, and yet we lament the implications of that. We worry about nobody being on the streets and it being, not being safe and, and people feeling a little fearful. And you can't get to things because the uses are so separate from each other. So, we kind of retreating from all these interactions and then we are wondering why the world is getting less interactive, if, if you see what I mean. About growth, therefore. That Nantucket's future growth should protect the island's visual and environmental quality by avoiding development on the moors, on farmland, and on other large expanses of open land. That it should occur, the growth, if it's going to come, it should occur primarily in and near existing developed areas. That it should provide more housing opportunities for the current year-round residents and seasonal employees. It should be limited to a level and rate that can be accommodated without degrading the island's quality of life, its physical and emotional carrying capacity. It should provide more diverse and better paying jobs for the current year-round population should not overtax the existing infrastructure of roads and water and sewers, schools, healthcare, etc. 
We should avoid widening major roads, major through roads. Minimize additional traffic by encouraging walking, biking and public transit use. Improve the infrastructure of sidewalks, bike paths, public transportation, <coughs> recreation facilities. Not to degrade drinking water resources or water quality of the harbors. Revitalize downtown into a viable year-round community. Make outlying commercial areas more attractive and pedestrian oriented. And allow mixed use in appropriate areas. Now again, this very contentious notion of a village concept almost listed those kind of things as its rationale in your 1983 documents, your 1990 documents. And so, again, at this particular sessions we had with you all through Saturday, the majority of you, I think it's fair to say, were, were again reiterating, reinterpreting those very environmentally, socially concerned sets of objectives back at us again. Um, with differences and with challenges, again, there was a strong people who had a lot of those concerns but believed they were more successfully achieved by not growing at all. Um, but many issues still to be resolved, let's be, let's be clear. Where to put any, literally, in detail, if you are going to put your, any growth closer to the, where people live already in, 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 in relatively um, well-defined communities, where to literally place these things? Um, next door, 50 yards away, um, closer, um, or start again just but on the edge of it, or a lot of issues about, uh, about that, which are very, very complicated, of course. How to protect property rights in the countryside and neighborhood interests in settlement areas. Um, how much to limit development, residential and commercial, whether to continue setting a building cap, whether to, and how to restrict second dwellings or allow them to keep going but have some kind of ruling about what you can do with them. Whether and how to restrict large seasonal trophy houses. These are not new to you, I know. But whether and how to restrict cars. Still major issues that need addressing and resolving. We're not going to be able to address those and resolve them in this particular first four-day um, charrette because our main task has been to deal with the, um, the, the, the overall notion of growth, where it might go, and how it might um, be managed to, to get to where it might grow. That, that, that then it's, it, it, you know, then the reality comes. It says, now what do we fear? Now all of a sudden, it's someone saying, whoops, do we want the village concept everywhere, but as long as it's half a mile away from where I live? Do we suddenly realize that the village concept is in fact is something we can't wait to throw out? because it's threatening us too much? Is it a level of change that we actually, intellectually, we like, but the idea of going through it as a community is just too much to bear? I mean, what actually is it? Because if, it's, if this is not something like this, something like this, not this, something like this is not what you really want, then does that mean you go back to the status quo? There's undoubtedly growth has been shown on this, on this scenario. Growth has been shown. There's arguably the areas that we showed growth there's probably, if you keep your building cap roughly like it is, there's probably 20 years worth of growth shown there. Don't, we well, probably will quote me and say don't quote me, but I mean it's the sense we haven't scientifically sorted that out, but possibly there is. Now the no growth would think that's a disaster, the growth, pro growth would think, well, you know, is that so bad? If, if what we're starting to involve is really frightens you once the words become diagrams and, and the houses become located, then we've, we can't go silent and we certainly, you certainly as the, as the, as the inhabitants and, 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 and residents of, of this place mustn't go back into your trenches and, and let the thing just carry on as it is unless you all of a sudden have decided that it's perfectly alright.